If you're new to Stable Diffusion, you might find all of the different settings a bit much to take in, and this is no exception for image to image. In this video, I'm going to focus on the basics of image to image. What is image to image even doing? What the heck is denoising? And how do I use in painting? And by the end of the video, you'll have some foundational knowledge that you can use in more advanced applications. Because at the end of the day, a lot of other tools like A Detailer, Multi Diffusion Upscaler, SD Ultimate Upscale, and even the Krita plugin all use image to image as a base under the hood. But before we delve into image to image, it would help to understand what Stable Diffusion is doing at its core. And that is making images out of random noise. You see, in text to image mode, Stable Diffusion is starting with a blank canvas of completely random noise that is refined over the number of sample steps that you specify. And after some small number of steps, it eventually coalesces into a recognizable image. Now, there are different methods of generating the image and generating the noise, but at the end of the day, this is what Stable Diffusion does. Now, the difference between text-to-image mode and image-to-image -image mode is how the noise is applied. In text-to-image mode, you can think of the noise as being applied to a blank canvas. And in image-to-image -image mode, think about the noise as being applied to a reference image. And you can configure how strong you want the noise to be applied. And this is known as the denoising strength, where a higher denoising strength means more noise is applied to the reference image. So with this in mind, let's turn to our first trick with image to image and use a very high denoising strength as a way of making it function almost like text to image, but with a little nudge in the right direction. So here, I've made a simple reference image in Krita, just using the gradient tool. Then we import that image into the image to image tab and adjust our denoising strength to 0.9 and make sure our resolution matches the reference image. And then we just generate a few images to see what it does. And as you can see here, it's taken on the basic shading of our reference image, darker on the top and lighter on the bottom. Keep in mind that I have no positive prompt for this, so it's free to do whatever it wants, but it's influenced by the reference image. So as you can see, we can use this to set the basic composition or color palette of the image. And so using this knowledge of how it applies noise, we can create a very crude representation of what we want to draw and it will just run with it with just the most minor of suggestions. If you've never really used image to image before, I suggest doing sketches like these and only tweaking the denoising just so that you can get used to the, the very basics of image to image. Then after you get used to doing this, uh, you'll have a better intuition on how to handle our next topic, which is in painting. So what is in painting? If you're new to stable diffusion, you might think in painting is more complicated than it really is. So let me offer you this brief explanation. In painting is really just image to image with some automation that blends the end result with the original image. So really it's not any different than running image to image by itself and then combining the two images in Photoshop. So with that in mind, let's dig into some of the various options that we have here. First, let me show you the differences between the in-paint area options. I will start with whole picture. So what this means is this is the area of the image that is fed into the image to image step. And when you use whole picture, the whole image is sent in. Imagine running the image you see here through image to image, non in painting, and then selecting the area that I have selected here in Photoshop with a feathering, an edge feathering with the amount of feathering being represented here by the mask blur. 
and then you just take that selection and then overlay it onto the original image. That's what we have here. And then with only masked, imagine taking the selected area and cropping the image down just to that area to feed into image to image. And with this option, it's important to keep in mind that the resolution now doesn't have to match the original image resolution. In my example here, I'm using a source image of 768 by 1152 and then a cropped area of 512 by 512. You can use whatever resolution you like. If the resolution is much larger than the original image, basically what happens then is it zooms in on that region and generates it at the higher size which will include a lot more detail, and then it will shrink it back down to fit on the original image. And if you've seen a detailer before, this is exactly what a detailer does. It's pretty much doing automatic in-painting. So now with your knowledge of how image-to-image -image works, let's crank the denoising strength all the way up and see what it generates. You can see that it's making things that are completely nonsensical because it has applied enough noise to completely obscure the original image. So if you've used image to image or in painting before and you had no idea what was going on and why your results looked like garbage, hopefully this demystifies it a little bit. Oh, and while we're on the subject of messed up images, let's just go over real quickly the masked content section. So you know how I said the original image is cropped and then fed into image to image? Well, that's only true if mask content is set to original, which should be the default. But let's set that setting to other things and see what it does. And as you can see here, it is generating things that don't quite match up to the original image because it has filled in the masked area with something else besides the original image. The case of fill is just kind of filling it in with a neutral color. And then in the case of the latent noise option, it's filling it in with noise. So I suggest um, sticking with the original option um, these other ones work well um, in very specific scenarios where you have to know what you're doing. But I think that's beyond the scope of an introductory lesson like this. Now, let's move on to the last thing I'm going to mention in this section, which is the only masked padding. As you may have already inferred, this refers to the amount of padding around the masked area that is used during only masked cropping mode. I generated things at first with only masked padding at zero, but if we increase that, um, that will increase the crop area surrounding the mask so that it helps with um, giving image to image more of the original image to work with. It's a pretty simple concept. I don't really need to dwell on that for too long. So I'll go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is in-paint sketch. I'm not going to spend too much time on this section, um, but basically what in-paint sketch is, is that it's, it lets you do like a really crude MS paint uh, brush over a section, and then you can run image to image on your crude sketch. Um, this works better at higher denoising strengths. And really, I don't use this feature a whole lot. This is now getting into um, basically using external tools like Krita or Photoshop or something to actually do the sketch. That, that, would, that would be a lot better than this. But, you know, if you need to do something quick, um, it is here as an option for you. Well, that's all I have for you today. I try to keep these videos at around 10 minutes. 
I haven't even touched on other subjects like control net or even Laura's. I haven't even talked about those yet. If there's anything that you would like me to talk about in a new guide or maybe an intermediate guide, just let me know. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Oh my God, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so thick. I like big butts and I cannot buy. You other ballers can't deny That when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist And a round thing in your face You get sprung Wanna pull a tough cause You notice that butt was stuffed Mountain boys try to warn me But that butt you got makes me so horny Cause I'm long and I'm strong and I'm down to get the friction on So fellas, fellas Has your girlfriend got the butt? Tell her to shake it, shake it Shake that healthy butt Baby got back Baby got back Baby got back Baby got back